In this video, we're going to round up some of the security features that you can implement in Power BI to ensure that your dashboards and your reports are secure. We're going to go through some simple features like managing your sharing permissions or your workspace roles to something more complex like, let's say, role level security or object level security. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Power BI is an amazing tool that lets you manage your data and your reports end to end. It could be financial data like sales information or even personal or sensitive information like date of birth, employee salaries. Having the proper security governance within these reports ensure that your data is handled correctly. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the security features that you can apply within your uh, reports or within your tenants and not necessarily about the security of Azure as a service, because that's not something that we can control, but we can control how we use this information or this data and how we deploy this to our users. So let's get started first by showing you how a Power BI report looks like. So here we have a Power BI report that uh, I've created and is published within the Power BI service. Now, unless this report is published for the web for, pu for the public to see, typically if your users want to access reports, they will only need a web page. They will also need the right permissions to access this report. Before accessing Power BI reports within the Power BI service, which is the one through the web browser, they will need to have a user account, a Power BI account, which is what Power BI uses to authenticate and understand what kind of permissions they have in this report. Can they reshare it? Can they, can they edit it? Can they view it? Uh, these kind of permissions. As the person who created or own this specific report, you have a few options to control how your different audiences use your report. The first thing is by managing your sharing permissions. So under share, you will see that you have a few options here to select who can access this link that you will create. Is it people within your organization or you can change it to people with existing access to the report already or for specific people. So you can define named individuals so that when they use this link, only they can have access to your report. From here, you can also change things like what kind of permissions they have ability to do, like, for example, being able to reshare this report or being able to build content on top of the data set of this report. So here you can control that for your audience. Along with this, you're also able to manage the direct access to your reports. So instead of regenerating links, you can also manage the direct um, access to these reports. So under here, the direct access, this means that they won't need to rely on a link that you give them. You simply, they simply just need to access the report using the direct link uh, to it. Another way that you can give access to reports is by using and giving them access to the workspace themselves. So if we look at my workspace here, for example, you can give uh, access here. If you click access, um, you can type the name of the people you want to give access to, as, and you will have a few options here on what kind of workspace roles they should have. Now, each of these roles have different permissions and they have uh, different capabilities based on, on what the role is. So for example, if you look at the viewer, which is the lowest uh, level of workspace, workspace role, they can view the reports, um, they can make the filters, but they won't be able to edit reports or create new reports unless they are, you know, one of the other different roles within this workspace. There is a, an article that uh, outlines what each of these workspace roles uh, can do. So I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. So unless you're collaborating with other colleagues to build your reports and dashboards, or maybe you just want to quickly share your reports, I typically don't do this for sort of organizations. What I do is instead create apps, which is not the same as the mobile app, but it's this organization app that you can create within your workspaces. And within this organization app, you can define what we call audiences, which is essentially a native way for you to create page level security. So giving access to the same app, but depending on which audience you are, some pages might be hidden based on that. So let me show you quickly how to do that. The first thing is here in our workspace. If I create app here, I'm just going to type a description here. This is an app. And if I hit next, 
you'll see that we have the ability to add content. So we will just add the two reports that we currently have here at the moment. And you'll see that we can do other things like move them around or, you know, expose other pages that we have, which we don't have really at the moment. The next bit here is what should be interested in, which is the audience. So here at the moment, everyone has access to all of these um, different pages based on the audience that you create here. So let's create an audience here. Let's say we'll create a public audience. And in this, in this audience, for example, let's say we don't want to see the parental leave report. So you can toggle that, uh, that I icon, which will make it invisible to anyone you assign in this audience. And on the right here is how you edit the audience, basically. So you assign people within this public audience to say, let's say colleague A is uh, is public, which means that uh, when they open this same app, they will be able to see the iPhone reviews report, but not the parental leave report, which is what we've set up here. So this is a great way to kind of deploy your reports and control which reports they have access to without having to create individual reports or dashboards for them. Role level security is another feature that allows you to restrict role level information within your reports, depending on what the role of that person accessing that report is. So imagine this, you have a table with uh, global sales for the company and uh, you want to have this report distributed to your regional managers, but this same report, what you want to do is for those regional managers should only be able to see the sales for their specific region. The typical way to approach this is by creating separate dashboards for each of them. But instead of doing that, you can just simply create a role level security. So you can define the role to create different regions. So here in this documentation, for example, you can create roles, add filters to those roles if you wanted uh, your regions to only see their own region. And then in Power BI service, you can assign those roles to those different regional managers. So that way, even though they access the same reports, the detail that they see in this report is different based on the role that you applied and uh, assigned to them. I hope that wasn't too confusing, but I did cover role level security in a different video in more detail uh, with some examples as well. So if you are interested in learning more about how this works and how you can implement it for yourself, go check out that video. If instead of rows, you want to hide, let's say columns, fields, or even tables from your audience, you can use what is called object level security. Now it's not a very commonly known feature because it's not something that you can access from, you know, Power BI's default UI. You need to access it through tabular editor, which is an external tool to kind of dig deeper into the data set themselves. I'll leave a link to the uh, article on it below and I did create a video about it as well. But essentially what it does is if you assign and, and uses the, it uses the RLS roles, but instead of hiding rows, it hides entire columns or tables. This feature is super powerful though, because it's not a simple filter. It literally removes that, um, that column or table from your data set. So uh, I've tried it before. And essentially if you have any measures that refer to those uh, columns, when they get removed, those measures or calculations will break because it doesn't recognize that it's there at all. So um, just keep that in mind if you want to use uh, this feature. Another security feature that you can apply within the Power BI service is what we call sensitivity labels. Now I did cover this already in a separate video, but it's essentially a way for you to assign things like a highly confidential public or strictly confidential to, you know, your reports or dashboards so that you can apply your organization policies to these items. So a use case would be, for example, you had a report with sensitive data and you don't want this to be able to be printed. You can apply this organizational policy, the sensitivity label to your reports so that if your users try to print it, they won't be able to because of the sensitivity label that was applied to it. What's great about this feature though, is that it extends to other Microsoft products. So it's not just something that is contained to Power BI. So for example, if you're connecting to data from Power BI to Excel, or you're exporting data into PDF, if there are any sensitivity labels applied to your reports, that will be inherited to those other uh, types of files as well. So if you can't print it in Power BI because of the sensitivity 
sensitivity label. If you then export it into an Excel file, for example, that will inherit that same sensitivity label. Just make sure that no matter which software or uh, file type you use, that these policies are always followed. Sensitivity labels, though, as I covered in my previous video, is not something that you can do within the sort of in the Power BI service without having tenant admin access. What I mean by that um, is this ad access to admin portal or access to the compliance center, which is something that you can only access if you have a tenant admin right within your Power BI service. Now on the topic of tenant admin, as a tenant admin, you have access to the admin portal, uh, which gives you a lot of control over what sort of restrictions you want to apply to your Power BI tenant. A few examples here, like for example, if you don't want people to be able to export to Excel or you know, not, they shouldn't be able to publish their reports to the web, for example, to, to make your reports public, you can disable it here and that will be applied to the whole Power BI tenant. And that's really it for this roundup. I hope I covered the majority of the security features that you can apply within your Power BI reports, as well as your Power BI service. But if I missed anything, let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.